What's going on everybody? Today we are going to be reviewing the game Voice of the Mummy. This game came out in 1971 from Milton Bradley and it is for two to four players. Now what is the Voice of the Mummy game about, Jackson? Jackson? Exactly! The object of this game is you are going to be trying to uh, collect the most amount of jewels and uh, get back to your base. Uh, now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be running around uh, this little 3D board here trying to collect jewels and every so often you're going to be asked to activate the mummy which is going to be run by, get this, a record player. That's right Jackson, a record player. So let's show you how this game works. Okay everybody, let's go ahead and show you this setup really quick. Uh, right here you have your game board and this is actually in two parts. Uh, this part is actually the bottom of the box. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to set this 3D styrofoam board on top of it like so. Um, rather cool. Uh, you have here green jewels and there are 26 of them on this board. And you're just going to set all of them on this little wing creature over here like so. Uh, you have your explorers. There's four different ones and you have two male, two female of different colors. Uh, right here you have what is called the Great Jewel. Uh, this goes into the mummy's foot over there, and this is the spell, and this is going to go into the mummy's head. Speaking of the mummy, this is where the star of the show is, and that is the record player. When you open this up, you're going to go ahead and see uh, that this is the record. Uh, it's two-sided, and each side has uh, 20 different tracks on there that are basically the mummy's commands. Uh, after somebody collects this red jewel over here, um, they're going to flip it over to side two. It starts on side one, and you're just going to simply stick the record in there, like so. And uh, you have the record unit over here that runs. You have your needle, and uh, then you have these different things in here that are going to stop and start the record. And the cool thing is, is it has a shuffle aspect to it to where anytime you uh, make the mummy speak, it's going to play a different track on the record. And then uh, once you shut it, it's going to activate. Right here you have four different jewel holders and these have some nice graphics on there. Uh, here's one, here's two, and here is three, and here is four. You're just simply going to drop any jewels that you collect in here. Now, uh, the uh, spell and the big great jewel are going to be placed on the mummy like so when you start. Uh, and this is going to be the button that is going to activate the mummy right here. So anytime uh, you activate the mummy, you'll just simply hit this button and it'll talk. Okay, and this here is the speed control. Um, basically, if your battery starts to get low, you can use the speed control to speed the record up so it'll match the pitch of the game. So let's go ahead and talk about how the game works. Uh, mainly the goal is you're going to be trying to get as many jewels as you can and score points with them. And the way you're going to collect the jewels is you're simply going to roll the dice and you're going to start moving. Uh, now you're going to move this way uh, on the first half of the game. And once someone collects this big red jewel, then players are going to be able to choose the direction that they want to go. Uh, as far as the spaces go on this game, a lot of them have hieroglyphics, but there's really only uh, two spaces you need to think about. Um, and one of them is the mummy space. If you land on the mummy space, uh, you're going to go ahead and activate the mummy. And the mummy commands are various. Uh, they, you can be giving jewels to somebody, you can be taking jewels. Uh, it may command you to go up a level, it may command you to go down a level. It may ask you to get the spell of somebody else. There's a lot of various commands on here. Uh, and of course there are the jewel spaces. If you end up rolling a number, let's just say you rolled a 1 and you landed on there, you would just simply take this jewel over here and you would place it in uh, one of the jewel holders like so. Uh, now there's also spaces here that are stairwells of sorts, and if you land on the base of this by exact count, on your next turn when you roll, you'll be able to go ahead and move up like one, two, three, etc. Um, now if you end up landing on somebody by exact count, let's say this guy landed on this guy, uh, yellow would have to give red one of their jewels. Now once you get up to this part over here, um, you're going to have to basically have all six of the jewels on the very top collected before somebody can get the great jewel. Uh, now, throughout the game, the mummy is going to tell you to take jewels from the board. Uh, it can be up to three or so, and you can take the jewels from anywhere. Um, so once all of these jewels are taken, and I'll go ahead and take them off, somebody just has to simply land by exact count on one of these spaces over here shaped like this. There's one here and one here. And if they are able to do that, they're going to collect uh, the great jewel, and they're going to collect 
the spell. Now if you have the spell, you're not going to be able to go back to the temple, and that's basically what's going to end the game. Uh, so if you want to try to win the game and you have this, you're not going to be able to do it because you have to get rid of this before you can get back to your home temple over here. So the way you can get rid of this is by landing on somebody while you have this. If that happens, you're going to end up giving them the spell, uh, and sometimes the mummy will tell you to give the spell to somebody else, so that's another way that you can get rid of it. You can also receive the Great Jewel this way. If you land on somebody by exact count and they have the Great Jewel, they're going to have to give it to you. Once you get up there, you go ahead and flip the record aside too. You'll go and shut it. And then from there, you'll actually be able to roll the die and you will be able to move in either direction, like so. Now again, you're going to have to land on the base of the stairs or the top of the stairs by exact count to get uh, down. Now when it comes to the actual temple, which is this area right over here, in order to end the game, you're going to have to land on this by exact count. Um, and so a lot of what happens in this phase is people are going to be chasing after the person that has the great jewel to try to take it because this jewel is worth five points. And so what's going to happen is the game is going to continue on like this um, until somebody actually is able to get to their home temple space right here. Um, and when that happens, everybody's going to go ahead and count how many jewels that they have in here, count the points. Again, the green jewels are worth one point, the great jewel is worth five points, and if you're stuck with this by the time when the game ends, you're going to lose five points. So after all that's counted up, the person who has the most amount of points via the jewels is going to win. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Voice of the Mummy. So, my final thoughts on the game Voice of the Mummy. Well, let's go ahead and start with the theme. I absolutely love the theme of this game. Um, I love the box art. I love the 3D little board. I absolutely love the mummy. And the record player, that is just so cool. Especially for the time. This was 1971, folks. Milton Bradley, uh, I tell you, they're always thinking outside the box. And this definitely is no exception. Love the jewel holders. Those things are really, really cool. Love the artwork on them. Uh, the jewel pieces, the spell, the big jewel. They're made of plastic, but they look really, really nice. I mean, thematically, this is a fantastic looking game. Now, how about the gameplay? Well, this is a kid's game. As you can see, it says ages 7 to 14. And basically, it's going to be a roll and move type of a game. Um, but it's not just simply roll and move. Uh, the mummy is going to be changing up the game uh, pretty much every single time you play this game. Uh, there's going to be times the game's going to go by quicker than others. Uh, there's going to be other times where it's going to be a dogfight. Um, now, the really cool thing about this game is what happens after that red jewel is taken. Now everybody can go ahead and move in the opposite direction. So what's going to happen if you're like the lowest person on jewels? Well, you can try to chase after the person that has the jewels and land on them by exact count and try to steal it. Or you can try to land on a mummy space and hopefully the mummy will give a command that is going to... Uh, give the spell to the person that has a jewel. Um, it is rather fun, I think. This is a fun, fun game. Uh, adults can definitely play this game. It's really easy to learn. This is what we call a grail game. And the reason it's called a grail game is because it's not cheap and it's typically a collector's item. Uh, the main reason why this game is a collector's item is because of the record player. And plus, this is not a very common game. It's pretty rare. If you're looking to get a complete copy with a working record player, you're looking at about $250. If you're looking to buy this game that does not have a working record player, it's going to run about $70 or $80, which is much cheaper. But the good news is, if you decide to get a Voice of the Mummy game without the record player, you can still play it if you have a smartphone. Uh, I actually figured out a way where you can you know, use a smartphone to play this game. You just need to get a Bluetooth speaker and a couple of apps, and it works great. You don't have to worry about fixing the record player or the record player breaking or anything like that. Um, and it costs all of $10 if you have a smartphone. All in all, this is a very enjoyable game. When I bought this game on eBay, they only, there was only a picture of the box. That was it and a description of what was in there. There were no other pictures. So I uh, went ahead and took a chance and I placed a bid on it. And, uh, the, game came is, and the game is in fantastic shape. Uh, it even came with a little letter from Sears uh, saying thank you for buying this game. It was typewritten. Um, I don't think this game has left the attic for probably 35 or 40 years. Um, it looked really clean on the inside. Uh, everything looked great. So folks, that's it for me today. I hope you all have a great day. Keep on gaming!